so check this out. I was doing a little more research. I took my cutoff wheel and I tried to open that up. And that's all aluminum all the way to here. So that means like where the PC board is, it's pretty shallow. So I chipped away at this one too to try to get to it just to see what I could figure out on it. And um, my buddy was telling me that you can cook these and all of this will come out. So I was trying to figure out how to, I don't want to put it in my oven in my house, you know, and I don't have another oven. Um, but I got a turkey fryer. And I could, what I'm thinking is get a pan, lay this in the pan, but I'll probably figure out a way to, like, take something and, you know, just have a gap so it kind of sits up and just heat it up and just see what, what happens. Um... Anyway, that's an interesting idea, but, you know, I was still kind of missing the whole, uh, I don't know, what's actually happening there. I mean, my theory is correct, but, you know, there's not a lot of information, so. Um, but I went and got my book, and I was looking through, and... I found uh, the Lighting Energizer Ignition Model 500 through 1975. And uh, if you read this, the alternator driver or charging part of the distributor contains a four pole permanent magnet rotor, stationary poles, and high and low speed voltage generating coils. The rotor is driven by at crankshaft speeds by the timing belt as the rotor poles pass the stationary and generating coils four AC voltage cycles are created per engine revolution one side of the AC cycle charges the capacitor the other side of the cycle discharges the capacitor into the ignition coil the high voltage induced in the coil secondary winding is sent to the spark plugs by the ignition rotor distributor cap and spark plug wires. Since each engine revolution produces four AC voltage cycles, this charge discharge sequence occurs four times per engine revolution. And then uh, they got a alternator driver. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, you can see it like that. Um, you know, this is that alternator stator. You know, and it goes down and... These are the two coils, high and low, because you only have two wires coming out of the alternator. You know, they're saying red and blue, but they're not uh, there's only two coming out of there the red white and blue is coming out of the coils that are in the distributor so then it's showing a diode rectifier so they got red and white on the ground and then here's the capacitor feed so the blue goes up to the switch box and then, you know, whatever happens in the switch box, you got ground, you know, there's a coil distributor. Uh, 140 volts, they're saying, DC. And the red coming out of the diode circuit shows it going through a diode to the coil. Yeah, so it shows one engine revolution 
one, two, three, yeah. So like this, I guess is the exhaust cycle. So charge, just charge, basically. Tri uh, yeah, triangle, side wave. So, well, what really is going on here? Because capacitor feed and then electronic switch box. You know, they got another diagram and it shows you the two coils. There's five and six. And if you look down here, slide the ignition driver assembly downward. Uh, oh, it talks about the removal. Um, so we know how to remove it. And there's the di there's the diagram. Um, you know, it talks about cleaning, inspection, um, assembly. You know, if one end of both charging coils were removed, position new coil and housing. Wipe coil screw threads with Loctite attach coil. Solder coil lines the terminal board. Cover solder connections with liquid neoprene. Install terminal board. I mean, it's a lot of unnecessary. Um, Loctite installation. Yeah. So, Thunderbolt CD ignition system with distributor. And it talks about turning the ignition key switch on sends a DC voltage switch box. Um, this is on a 650 to 850. So the old style we know is a ground from key to the blue connector. Um, So yeah, that's, but we just still don't know what the values, there's your charging capacitor, and then I guess there's a rectifier, so that means there's like four diodes, or, I don't know, there's a series of diodes, and there's probably a couple of resistors in here, but we don't know what the values are. So what I'm thinking is if I can get this out of here and figure out the diodes, I mean the values, then I could possibly, I've got another switch box, I could get this stuff out of here. And since I cut into this, I don't, I don't think I want to mess with it, but it'd be cool to melt this out and see if I can find the values. You know, because I could repair the other ones and then you just fill this with epoxy. You just, I mean, honestly, I can make a mold, right? And once I get all this out of here, I still have the post. Because somehow you still got to deal with, like, I've got some broken posts there. You know, you don't want this ground into your chassis. So, uh,. Yeah, anyway, but it, or you could just do wires, but then you got to do, you know, I don't know, you'd have to do like butt connectors or something. And that, coming from that coil, it's like a twisted pair wire. So you'd have to rig something up there if it's just a wire out, you know, I don't know, maybe a small screw and nut. And then two, uh, two of those round connectors. So, I don't know. Um, pretty interesting, though. But you, it's hard to find these. I mean, that size engine, you could get a switch box for 30 or $40. At the most, 100 bucks. You know, you don't even, you don't really want to spend a hundred bucks on one of these, but 
the parts in here. I don't know. It's probably Mauser would have the parts. Uh, it's still going to be expensive because the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. You still got to ship it. That's the part that gets you, but I mean, I don't know, four bucks shipping, 12 bucks. You'd have into it, plus the epoxy. Yeah, you could probably do one for at the most 30 bucks if we knew the values. Um, we could get this stuff out of here. You know, we could probably figure that out. So anyway, uh, I was just, uh, I don't know, seeing what I can do. It's cold. It's super cold right now. So I just got a, I got a heater and stuff out in the garage. And I'm trying to work a little bit. I got the 50 is all wired up and I even put the remote on it so when I get it out in the driveway, get a warm day, I can fire it up. And uh, uh, the only other thing I'll do is maybe I can, if I can find some cheap uh, fuses, I might put a fuse on the alternator just to protect it. Uh, the only thing about that is I don't know what size fuse. Uh, I'd say maybe like a 10 amp or I mean it could probably be, be higher than that. It could probably be like a 15 or a 20 amp fuse. Like an inline fuse. But I gotta find them where they're cheap. You know, if you go to O'Reilly or someplace like that, you might spend uh, too much money. So, and I'll replace the cable because I think it needs to be beefier. You know, so like, I don't know if that's like 18 gauge wire. Really needs to be, you know, like. 10 or 12 gauge wire and a fuse so I'll look around see if I can find something check it out just got an old pan kind of lifted it up a little bit so that stuff maybe will run out I'm going to light this dude and heat it up see how she does Well, that really didn't work. But anyway, 
a sfare a sfare oh well tried it see if it worked didn't really work so there you go it'll be a mystery for time unless somebody knows how to do that Same.